questions? So which level we are looking for? This level. Okay, so for the ground state, okay, for the ground state V0, we had the first order correction simply V0 by V0 by 4. Clear? Now we are looking for the correction at which level? For the first level, which is uh, triple E degenerate, okay? The degeneracy is 3. Clear? Uh, 3, 4 degeneracy is there. How many states are there? So let me write. So we are having these very states, psi, where n1 is 2, n and y is 1, 1. Clear? <coughs> so you are having 1, 2, 1. You are having psi. 1, 1, 2. This I called as 2, 1, 1, and this 1, 2, 1, and this is 1, 1, 2. So uh, these were the three states which are triply degenerate. Okay, so what is the energy here? What is their energy for this very state? So it is 3 h cross square, phi square divided by ma square. So these states have this much of energy. Clear? Is it three? Yes. Okay. So now what I need to calculate? I need to calculate that Hij matrix. Eh? So you had, okay, so this is the first step. First you calculate what? Hij matrix, the perturbation matrix. Clear? So this is your perturbation matrix. Okay, so this uh, needs to be calculated. So what is that equal to? So this matrix, uh, okay, so let me, for the timing, I will use them. This is ij, it means it's a, uh, it's a matrix. So what are those? So how many states are available at hand? So how many states are? Three states. So what is the dimensionality of this very matrix? It is a three by three matrix. So I have to calculate this way. So let's start with the first state. So you are having two, one, one, and this h1, Two one clear. Okay, yeah? Then you take two one one h one and the other one one two one clear. Okay, yeah? Then you take two one one h one 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 two clear. Okay, yeah? So this is the first row. Okay. Then next it is like this. Yeah? So one two one h one two one one then. Okay, one two one. Keep the first cat same. H one one two. Okay then, one two one. H one 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 two. Then you are hang this. Okay, one one two. H one two one one. Then you are one one two. H one one two one. Then one one two. H one. Okay, one, one, two. So this is the matrix, three by three matrix, what we need to calculate, clear? Yes, okay. So now if you look at this thing, these elements, so this, uh, these, uh, these diagonal terms, uh, so if you see, this is the expectation value of H1, in which state? Two, one, two, one, one state, clear? In this state, psi two, one, one. And this is the expectation value in one, two, one state, and this is the expectation value in one, one, two state. And these off diagonal terms are simply the transitions between the states. Clear? So if you see, so you can calculate these directly. Eh? So what should be the value? <laughs> its value is simply v naught by four. Okay? Because it will give. Uh, sim okay. So you can calculate. <coughs> so let me try it. So this two one one, h one two one one. So this we can write as like this thing. Okay. Integration over dx integration over dy, <coughs> integration over dz, then psi star <coughs> 2, 1, 1, then you are having h1, psi of 2, 1, 1. Clear? Okay, so what is your psi star? Okay, so for you people, let me write it here. <coughs> so what is your psi <coughs> nx, ny, nz? So that's equal to 2 by a whole cube, okay? Sine of nx pi by a x, sine of ny pi by a y, sine of ny pi by a z. Clear? Okay. 
So what is our psi two one? Okay, psi two one one. What is that equal to? So you have to put here n x equal to two. Okay, two by a whole cube. Okay, sine of two pi by a x. Okay, sine of y m i is one. Eh? So uh, you need to keep this in mind. Eh? Sine of pi by a z. Clear? Got it? And substitute the value here. Okay, so you get. Okay, so what are the limits of integration? For x, it is zero. Since h one is non-zero square, uh, zero to a by two for x, and y <coughs> zero to a by two, and that is zero to a. Clear? Okay. So once you substitute it, so you get simply v zero by. <coughs> Clear? Okay. So the value of this object is v zero by four. Uh, okay. So for these objects, <coughs> actually. Encircle them, so their value is all v zero by. Clear? Got it? So you now got how to evaluate the diagonal terms. Okay, so now let's look at the off diagonal terms. I will calculate only one. The rest you will do. Huh? Okay. So there will be. Okay. So let me take this one. This very term. Can anyone tell me what should be the value here of this very term? What should be the value? Okay. So it's actually zero. So it is very. Uh, shall I write the matrix directly? The value values of the elements. Okay. It is simple. Uh, let's take this one. <coughs> two one one. Okay. H one one two one. Okay. So what that will be? That tell me. So it is zero to a by two b x. Zero to a by two b y, then zero to a d z. What is psi two one? So it is two by a. Okay, two by a. So this will come out two by a cube because it will come from both the factors. Okay, so what you are having here? Sine of so n x is two. So it is two pi by a. Okay, x. Then you are having sine of pi by a y. Sine of pi by a z. So it comes from psi star of x. Okay. So here what you are having. <coughs> okay. So what you have? Sine of pi by a x. And then you are having two. So it will be two pi by a y sine of pi by a z. Okay. So if you calculate this very integral, the value will be equal to zero. Clear? Okay. So. Hmm? Got it. So this will be the value. Similarly, we will calculate the other value, other integrals. Okay, these are uh, simple, trivial integrals. Okay, they are not difficult integrals. Okay, because it will consume time. Uh, so I will simply write this h i j. Okay, this perturbation matrix. Okay, I should not use indices i j because uh, there is nothing like i j on the right hand side. Eh? So. So let me write the perturbation matrix this H tilde. Yeah? So this makes sense mm. because I, uh, when I am putting indices, so I should put indices on the right as well. Okay, mm. So there is nothing, no index on the right. So the good uh, notation would be put H tilde. It's a per perturbation matrix. Okay, so you write it like this thing, v zero by four. Okay. So let me write this very matrix. Okay. So it is one zero zero, okay, zero one, okay. And let me write it as k, okay, zero k one, and why k is equal to eight by q by whole square, okay. So the value of this k, yeah? once you calculate, so the diagonal terms, yes, the diagonal terms are having what value? V zero by four that I have told it. So these terms are zero, and only these two non. These uh, two of diagonal terms are uh, non-zero. Clear? Okay. So what is now the problem? So I have identified the perturbation matrix. Clear? So this we have calculated. What is the next step? Diagonalize it. Okay. By finding a secular equation. Clear? By solving a secular equation. Clear? Okay. So what are the eigenvalues? Can anyone tell me? Okay. So if you see, so you are having the uh, these are zero. These are zero. So the first eigenvalue is one. Forget about this v zero by four. Okay, 
So you need to only diagonalize this part. Mm -hmm. So what are the eigenvalues here? No, no. What are the eigenvalues here? So you need to diagonalize this. Thing. So how can anybody? So it is simply one plus minus k. Uh, do you see? So so it is something. So <coughs> if you are not able to do, just put minus lambda. Okay. So let me write the diagonalization kind of thing. For determinant equal to zero, one minus lambda. 0, 0, 0, 1 minus lambda, k, 0, k, 1 minus lambda, put it the determinant equal to 0. So now, so you will be having 1 minus lambda, okay? So then you are having this thing, 1 minus lambda square, clear? Minus k square, that's equal to 0, okay? So there is actually a factor of e0 by 4 also sitting here. Yeah? So we will multiply these with the eigenvalues, eh? because all the eigenvalues are multiplied by that factor. Eh? So you should know it. Eh? Okay. So <coughs> now what are the eigenvalues here? So your first eigenvalue is equal to lambda equal to one, and another of okay. So one minus lambda whole square is equal to k square. So which implies lambda is equal to one plus minus. Clear? Got it? So in other words, actually, uh, so what are now the eigen energies? Tell me. First order corrections? Just tell me. So there are three levels, clear? So your degeneracy is now lifted. Clear? You got my point. So you started with a three-fold degeneracy, is it? Once you applied the perturbation, what has happened? So those levels are split up, clear? So the degeneracy is removed. Like this way. So, so you are having three states, they are a degenerate. Clear? So what happens? You get back how much? Three states. Okay, what now I need to fi figure out what is the energy of these three states, is it? Or rather the first order correction. Now what are these corrections? So let's take the first order correction. Just tell me. To which level? Okay, so it is uh, level two. Clear? And X. So the uh, second level, huh? So what is that? Now tell me. Just tell me what is the energy. So just the eigenvalues of that perturbation matrix, clear? Patricia? Yes. Huh? Yes, exactly. So the uh, one energy will be what? Simply this one, first eigenvalue. But what is the multiplication there? V naught by four. So the first will be V naught by Four. What is another? Okay, another value will be one plus k v naught by four. What is the next? One minus k v naught by four. Okay, so these are the energies. Got it? So you are having three eigenvalues means three energies. So th these are the energies. One energy, another energy, another energy. Clear? So this perturbation simply lifts up the degeneracy. Now, what is our uh, another point? Okay. okay. I need to figure out what are the good eigenstates here. Clear? Samasha? Everybody follow, got it, what I have done? Huh? <coughs> Everybody? Okay. So, what are the good eigenstates? So, what are the good eigenstates? I need to figure out what are the good eigenstates. Those are the states which are. Uh, which diagonalize this. In other words, which are actually the eigenstates of this very matrix. Clear? So in, in other words, I need to look at this very matrix. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, k, 0, k, 1. Clear? I need to figure out the eigenstates of this matrix, which correspond to the eigenvalue 1, eigenvalue 1 plus minus k. Clear? So there will be three states. So much yes, Now if I uh, choose, let's say, let me choose 1, 0, 0. This very objective. So what is the eigenvalue? What is the eigenvalue of this very vector? Corresponding this vector. It's 1. Okay? So it is simply 1. Clear? Is it true? Huh? So, okay, essentially what you have started from. Okay, look here. Yesterday we have done it for the two-state problem, clear? We start with actually like this thing. 
some unperturbed cat, which is actually the linear combination of this M naught to unperturbed degenerate perturbed cats. Sorry, unperturbed cats. Clear? So we started with this kind of linear combination. So now I am having a three state, uh, three okay, three fold degeneracy. How I start here? So, okay, understand it carefully. So, in two state problem, I am having two states where degenerate, clear? And I stated with a state that was a linear combination of these unperturbed states, degenerate states, clear? And I got a two by two matrix, clear? And I figured out these were actually uh, the good eigenstates are the good states, okay, which could diagonalize that two by two matrix. Now, if I am having here threefold degeneracy, is it? So what should be this kind of state? The, it should be actually the linear combination of all those three unperturbed states, clear? Yes, yes. So here I have to start <coughs> in this very case. So this K naught, so K naught, uh, okay, it is an unperturbed cat. So I can take like this thing, that psi two one one, okay, plus beta, psi 1 2 1 plus gamma psi 1 1 2. Clear? So this is the linear combination I have to start with and I will get ultimately this kind of matrix. So much Yes. Got it? Okay, so now what I have figured out. So I actually, if you see, so it should have been like this thing. And H matrix kind of thing, this H till day, then you are having this eigenvector, so you can write it as alpha, beta, gamma. So it should give you the first order correction, that alpha, <coughs> beta, gamma. Clear? Okay, so what is our basis here? Our basis is here on these three states. Clear? Got my point? This, uh, okay, so now what I have chosen here? I have chosen one, and rest two are zero. zero. So that means, okay, so what is the eigenstate corresponding to this very state? Uh, sorry, eigenvalue is 1 and the eigenstate is this thing. So now let's calculate that state. Okay, so let's calculate that state. Okay. So what is that state? Okay, so the first state will be, okay, so let's write one, uh, one state, psi 1. So what will be that? You put beta and gamma equal to 0. And let's put alpha equal to 1. So what you get? Psi 2, 1. So this is the first state. And what is the energy here? Okay, so you are having lambda equal to 1. So it is actually the first order correction. That's equal to V naught by 4. Got it? Okay, so now let's take the another case. So if I put, let's say, okay, let me put alpha equal to 0. Okay, so let's put alpha equal to 0 and put this equal to 1, and put this equal to 1. So what I will get? Now look here. So this gives you 0, and when you take this thing, it will be 1 plus k, okay? And this will also give you k plus 1, that is simply 1 plus k, 1. Clear? Got it? So this is not normalized. You can normalize because you are having only two non-zero terms here, divided by root of 2. Clear? Got it? So you can multiply this column vector by root of 2, so you get normalized. What, what is the state you have got? This is 0, this is, okay, 1 by root 2, this is 1 by root 2, clear? By normalization, okay? So what is the next state you have got? So you have got, let's say, psi 2, let's write it, psi 1, 2, 1, plus psi 1, 1, 2 by root 2, clear? So what is the energy? So it's simply equal to 1 plus k v naught by 4. Okay? So you can think it is this very state. So the first was psi 1 is this, and psi 2 is this, because energy has increased by 1 plus k. Now let's look at this one. So if I put a minus 1 here, okay? So let me put minus 1. So this will give you 0. This will give you mi 1 minus k, clear? So this, k, this will give you k minus 1. That you can take out. So you'll write minus, minus one. Fill it? So the another linear combination, so the another state is simply the linear combination of the two. Like this thing. So what is the energy? So the first order correction is one minus k, v naught by four. So that means these this set of states 
this is actually the, these are the good eigenstates. In other words, if you take these three states, they will diagonalize uh, yeah. your matrix color and you get actually the eigenvalues corresponding to these three states. Not, okay, so now you see, this is, these are simply the linear combination of these two states. Got it? So much sure? Okay. So in other words, if you turn off the, uh, this perturbation, where they will go? They will go to these various states, eh? okay? So much sure? If you see, uh, okay. Uh, even in the unperturbed case, let's forget about there is no perturbation. What is the energy here? That's E naught. So for this state is E naught, this state is E naught. So this state is also having the energy E naught, is it? Yeah. So these are the these three degenerate states. If you turn off the perturbation here and move back here, these states will reduce to one, will reduce to psi one, psi two, and psi three. Clear? So clear? Got it? Okay, so now let's take the linear star effect. So we have done quadratic star effect. Uh, previously. Yes? Uh, you have any kind of question, just ask me. Eh? Okay, directly, you can ask any damn thing. There is no problem. Okay. So we have done quadratic star, star effect by what? Uh, Non-degenerate perturbation theory for the ground state. Why? Why we call that as a quadratic star effect? Because the energy shift at the second order, uh, so there was no first order correction to the energy, clear? Yes. And the second order correction depend on the <coughs> E square, not on E. That's why we call it as a quadratic star effect. And here we will see uh, the energy depends on uh, linearly on this electric field. Okay, so that's why the name linear star effect. Okay, so we'll consider the level n equal to 2 for the hydrogen atom. Okay, <coughs> or the hydrogen like atoms, but we'll take only the hydrogen atom. Okay, so you are having n equal to 2. Okay, so f first uh, level, you don't have the degeneracy n equal to 1. Eh? Since we are trying to apply the degenerate perturbation theory. So the that suitable state is n equal to two. Okay, so what are the values for L? So if you take n equal to two state, yeah. so what are L? Zero, one. Yes. Zero and one. one. So <laughs> what is the degeneracy? So the good quantum numbers are M L okay, so M L. So corresponding to this state you are having zero. Corresponding to this it is one, zero and minus two. Okay? So what is your, okay, so my states, uh, okay, so how many possible states are there? So what is the good eigenbasis here? Good eigenbase means which diagonalize the hydrogen atom Hamiltonian. So that is simply that N, quantum number, principal quantum number, corresponding to energy, okay? Okay, and the angular momentum quantum number, and then its projection, ML, huh? Since we're, okay, we're not considering spin here, huh? Okay, I'll not consider spin. Okay, if you consider spin as well, so it results will remain unaffected. Clear? Okay, so in the next example, we'll take spin as well. So these are actually, so I'm having, so L square and LZ. So the eigenstates of L square and LZ, so they form actually a good eigenbasis to diagonalize the hydrogen atom. Clear? This is very important. So when you look at a given problem, you always choose a basis. In which basis the operator is diagonal. Clear? So, yes. So you need to figure out what are the operators which commute with the Hamiltonian. Okay, so let me uh, give an example. Okay, so let's take the hydrogen atom. In the simplest of the case, so you are having this very objective, P square plus 2M, Okay, 
एंड देन यू आर है माइनस ई स्क्वायर बाय आर क्लियर सो फॉर दिस वेरी पोटेंशियल आई नीड टू फिगर आउट व्हाट आर द कंजर्वेट क्वांटिटीज ओके कंजर्वेट क्वांटिटीज वुड इंप्लाई आई नीड टू फिगर आउट व्हाट इज एन ऑपरेटर व्हिच कम्यूट्स विद दिस हैमिल्टोनियन ओके सो द फर्स्ट ऑपरेटर इज व्हाट सो इफ यू टेक एल स्क्वायर नॉट एल एल स्क्वायर क्लियर सो दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो ओके then you take lz so you are having the rotational symmetry <coughs> complete rotational symmetry of the hydrogen atom because it's a spherically symmetric object okay and in addition to that you are having the rotation about z axis as well okay got it yes okay so this is equal to zero now okay so uh, uh, for this hydrogen atom these two are the symmetries uh, when you don't have the field now if i put the electric field let's say or some kind of field i will put okay what will happen so this symmetry is broken okay or uh, one of the two symmetries will be broken so there will be no spherical symmetry or the symmetry along one axis is not there clear only this asymmetry is about the other axis are there you need to choose then that kind of subspace why you are hang that symmetry okay so you are hang the symmetry here and one more point you are hang this very objective l square lz is equal to this is very important it's not necessary let's say if you are having two operators uh, okay let's take three operators a b c if a commutes with b and b commutes with c it's not necessarily uh, others to commute as well it's not necessary <coughs> okay now how uh, uh, it is possible this l square and lz commute is it so that means i can figure out the eigen states of this l square in terms of lz okay Got it. So what are those eigen states? L and M. Clear? Okay? So you are having this. So this is the object of what you are having. L into L plus one. Okay, L M, and then you are having this L Z, L M. Okay, H cross. Uh, what is that? M. Huh? M. Yes. M H cross L. Clear? Okay? So you know the eigen values corresponding. Okay, so you know L square in terms of actually L Z. Got it? And if I know these things, so I can use this very basis. Since uh, commutation itself means you can simultaneously measure the two operators. So that implies you diagonalize the two operators simultaneously. Okay? So in other words, I can use the basis of this thing in which this L square is diagonal. Uh, okay? To make this H diagonal. Got it? So what you are actually get? What does that mean? If you take this edge, okay. So now you are having one more quantum number. That is the radial part of the wave function, okay. N L M, okay. So this comes from where? L square and L Z, okay. And take this thing. Let's say N prime, L prime, M prime. So you will get some energy, okay. E N. So let me write this E N, and then what it will be? Delta N M prime. Delta L L prime and delta M M prime. So this is actually the diagonal matrix, clear? And all the uh, diagonal elements of this very object are energies, clear? Okay. So now let's go to this thing. Okay. Now if I put, uh, we'll see actually in case of spin orbit coupling. <coughs> when we say, so there uh, we'll see the part of the Hamiltonian is not commutable with the s dot L. I mean the spin orbit coupling, clear? So then we have to choose some different kind of basis to diagonalize that. Okay. So it means I need to figure out a basis why uh, it is trivial. Uh, the matrix is trivial. Okay. It is simply some number multiplied by the identity matrix. If you see, it is simply a number multiplied by an identity matrix. Clear? Okay. <coughs> So where here? Yeah. Okay. So now our good eigen states are here. Since we don't have any kind of field for the time being, okay. Even if we put the field as well, okay. If we put the electric field, you'll see this L square and L Z will co commute with that as well, huh? Okay. You can. Okay. So let me first write it. So what are your states? So what I was saying. So your N L M states are here. So these are. So you are having two. Uh, let's take. This zero, then zero. L is equal to zero. M is equal to zero. So these are all degenerate. So let me take one. Uh, this one, one zero. 
Okay, then I will take two, one, one. Then I will take two, one, one. So these are the four <coughs> states which are degenerate. What is the energy? So what is the energy? Let's call that energy equal to E2. E2 does not mean the second order correction. Correction index comes here, right? E2 is zero. So this is the zero. What is the energy, anybody? I also forgot. Eh? So it is minus E squared by E A naught. Okay, so we are using A or A naught as the Bohr radius. A, eh? okay. So A is the Bohr radius. Clear? So this is the energy corresponding to these three, three states. Okay? Now what is our, pro, uh, so these are all the three unperturbed states, clear? Okay, so now I need to figure out, okay, so um, uh, let's apply the perturbation. Okay, so let me consider the electric field minus E, okay, magnitude of this electric field and along Z direction. Okay, so I'm applying the electric field along which direction? Z direction. Now if you take the Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom, that commutes to this thing. Okay? So that commutes. So you don't have now the problem with the basis. Eh? <coughs> so you use the same kind of basis. Eh? So there is no problem. Okay. So now what I need to identify first. So let's get your answer. I need to figure out first eh? perturbation matrix. Killer. What is the dimension of that matrix? It's a four by four matrix. Killer. So let's try this perturbation matrix H tilde. So that's equal to Okay, so let's start with this. So you are having 2, 0, 0, H1, 2, 0, 0. And then you are having this 2, 0, 0, H1, then 2, 1, 0. Then you are having 2, 0, 0, H1, 2, 1, 1. You are having 2, 0, 0, okay? H1, 2, 1, minus 1. Okay, I'll write this one. So 2, 1, 0, H1, 2, 0, 0. Then you are having this 2, 0, 0. Sorry, 2, 1, 0, H1, 2, 1, 0. Clear? OK, so this thing. So then you are having. So I will not write the entire thing. I repeat only these. Eh? So you will do. So this is a 4 by 4 matrix. Eh? So it's simply, I will put simply it is a 4 by 4 matrix. Not a four by four car, eh? okay. So I we need to evaluate all these matrix elements, okay. So but we know there is a kind of symmetry, what we call as a parity symmetry arising uh, in the uh, hydrogen atom orbitals, okay. Different states are having different uh, parity. Clear? Okay. Uh, there is one more result. Uh, if you remember yesterday, we said. If I don't know a priori what are the kind of states that diagonalize the Hamiltonian, clear? Then I need to figure out another operator which commutes with this Hamiltonian, and I will diagonalize this. Uh, you remember it? So if you remember yesterday's result, so I said if there is some operator omega which commutes with this H1, okay, then I can use the eigenstates of this omega to diagonalize this H1, clear? Okay. So now if I see. <laughs> Okay, so let's take, there is a kind of symmetry. So if I look, okay, so let's define this LZ as XPY minus YPX. So these are the operators. Okay, so this is your LZ operator. And if you check, this LZ commutes with H1. Okay, so you are having this LZ commuting with H1. And this LZ is also commuting with what? Your H0, the hydrogen atom itself. Clear? Got it? So that means I can use this, the eigenstates of this LZ. Now your question comes, eh? what you have asked. I can use the eigenstates of this LZ to diagonalize what? H1. So in other words, I can see what are the, okay, what are the values of these uh, objects, these of diagonal terms are the diagonal terms. Clear? Okay, so let's try to figure them out. Eh? So let's take this object. So you'll get actually a selection to kind of. So you are having this very object, okay? 
So let's write this thing NLM, okay? LZ, H1 minus H1, LZ, okay? So let me write N, L prime. Since N is fixed, I'm taking for the fixed N, eh? only the L and M will change. Eh? So this is equal to zero. So what I have chosen here, N is fixed. Because I am taking a fixed level on which I am looking at uh, the effect of perturbation. Clear? <coughs> okay. So now what is the <coughs> LZ acting on this LM? So it will give me M. Clear? <coughs> Got it? When LZ acts on, okay. So what is the operation like this thing? LM. So it is simply M H cross <coughs> LM. Clear? So what you will get here? So you will get M H cross N L M. H1 and L prime M prime, okay? Minus LZ will act on this thing. So you are getting, okay? So what do you get? Minus M prime H cross. It is saying M prime, okay? <coughs> H prime, that's equal to zero. So you, which you can write as M minus M prime, okay? H cross and L M H1 and L prime. Zero. Clear? Now, if m is not equal to m prime, <coughs> let's say if m is not equal to m prime, whatsoever is your l, eh? whether l is equal to l prime or l is not equal to l prime, <coughs> but you are having a selection rule here, let's say m is not equal to m prime, what you are getting? This object is equal to this is equal to zero. Okay, so now identify the elements which are having m not equal to m prime. So the terms which, whatsoever is l and n, okay, n is fixed. If you see, in all these states, n is fixed, clear? Yes. Okay, so l and l prime, whatsoever is l and l prime, there is no problem. Only m and m prime has to be different, clear? Figure out which terms are having m and m different. So you are having zero m here and one. So it means it is zero. So you are having zero here, minus one. So these are zero. Similarly, you get all other terms, so they will be zero by this very selection rule. Clear? Okay. So now if m is equal to m prime, clear? So there are two ways. Either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. Now let's put the other way. Okay? Yes? So if m is equal to m prime, okay, then this is not equal to zero, okay. Then n l m, okay, h one, it will be n l prime m. This is not equal to zero, okay. So that means the terms which are having m same, they are not equal to zero. So what is the problem with now? N is fixed, M we have fixed now, clear? Yes, Only we have to look for the L, selection rule for the L, clear? Okay, so this object is zero for L as well, when, okay? So there is a selection rule, okay? Now, N, L, M, H1, N, L prime M, this is equal to zero, okay, if the difference between L minus L prime is equal to something, 2k plus 1, where k is equal to 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, so on. So you can check that. Okay? If the difference between these two objects is simply what? 2k plus 1. 2k plus 1. <coughs> That's an odd term. Clear? So wh what you are in L minus, if I take k equal to 0, what do you get? No. 1. If I take k equal to 1, three. you'll get 3, eh? Yes. Okay, if you take minus 1, um, it is minus one. Clear? So that means it, it is odd. Eh? Okay, two k plus one is odd. So if the difference between these two objects is odd, okay, then this is equal to zero. Okay. So what remains then? Zero. Only the even part. If the difference is even, clear? Got it? Okay. So let's put this as assignment. Show this. Eh? So it is very simple. Look, uh, what is H1? H1 contains only Z. Okay? If it is simply Z. Z is having odd parity. Clear? 
And these states, when you take L minus L prime to be 2k plus 1, so that product will be having an even parity. So that's why this has to be equal to 0. If I take L minus L prime to be even, that will correspond to odd parity. Odd multiplied odd is even clear. That's non zero. Got it? So much of just check it. Eh? Take one of the states. Okay, take one of let's say take mm, where this L is not equal to L prime. Okay, take some state here. Here at this very point. Eh? Philip? So take this very state and check. So you'll be hanging this exactly equal to zero. Okay. So now what remains is there? So now how many elements are there? Which are non-zero, yes? Huh. Just tell me. Now look here. We have shown these two are zero. These it implies these two are zero, Philip. So that this very result will give all other terms equal to zero. Both the results, huh? You will be having this element equal to zero by the previous result. Implies this result is also equal to zero. So how okay, so this and this, sorry, this and this implies this and this, correct? So these two diagonal terms will be zero by this very argument, correct? So what remains there? Nothing, huh? So this is also zero, this will be zero. Clear? Got it? Just write this matrix in full form, okay? And use these two selection rules. You'll see everything is zero except two terms, okay? So now tell me. Now tell me. Which term is zero? Which term is non zero? Oh, we can see. Have I said correct things? Or? Huh? Yes, I have told you correct things. What is this thing? Okay, what is the first element? What is this thing? What is this element? Anybody? Yes, what is this element? So that is also equal to zero. Huh? Ah, yes, yes. <coughs> is that equal to zero? Anybody can anybody tell me? What is the parity of the first exercise step? Huh? Yes, So this term is also zero by parity argument. This is also zero. This is also zero. I'm sorry. These are <coughs> all zero. Huh? Can you see it? First tell me, can you see it? Can you see it? Huh? So what is the total parity? So it is even multiplied by odd. Huh? Okay, now how? Look here. If your ground state is having even parity, what is the parity of the first axis state? Huh? Yes? Hmm. Yes. So the parity is conserved, so your uh, parity is the uh, same. Clear? Okay. So now what is the parity of Z? It is odd. Okay, check this thing, sir. So I will not write. So let me write this psi to 0, 0. So only the non-vanishing terms, what you do? Okay, I will, I will write these things, eh? so no issues. So these are the non-vanishing terms, okay? But <coughs> so I have put something wrong, eh? so there is something wrong, eh? I don't know, because if I look here, what is the difference? It's one, fill it. So it should be non zero. So only the terms with this difference is equal to one, that's equal to non zero. Rest are zero. Okay, so this is equal to non zero. So, okay, so by that, okay. So now let's look at this argument what I have put. Huh? I'm sorry. Huh? So rest are, okay, these off diagonal terms are zero by the first argument, fill it, where m is not equal to m prime, fill it. Now we are having m equal to m prime. Okay, so this state is having m equal to m prime. Philip? Yes. This is having m equal to yeah. m prime. These are the states which are having m equal to m prime. But the point is here. So when 
Okay, so when this condition is satisfied, eh, then this object is equal to non-zero. So you are hanged here, sorry, when L minus L prime is equal to, or, so you are hanged the difference here one, clear? So difference is one or minus one. L minus L prime, this is equal to minus one, and you are hanged one here difference. So that's equal to non-zero. What is the difference here? It's even, that's equal to zero. So by this very definition. Okay, so now what is the difference here? It's again even, so it is zero, clear? So this is equal to zero. So in the, these cases, what you will be having? So that is again zero, so those are zero. Okay, so I have put actually this on. I'm sorry, so this is not equal to zero, okay? So we are having only these two states, these two objects, two, zero, zero, at one, two, one, zero, which are non-zero, clear? Got it? Okay, if you are not satisfied with this kind of definition, just expand this object. Eh? Write this 200 H1200, this expectation value. Okay, so you'll get the value equal to zero. So let me write the wave function. Okay, so you are having this i200. Okay, so that's equal to 1 divided by root of 32 pi a q. Okay, 2 minus r by a e raised power minus r by. Two, okay, so you should not say r goes to minus r. If so, you are hanging. It is in the spherical polar coordinates. Eh? In spherical polar coordinates, how will you find the parity? So that's related to what theta and phi. Clear? So in spherical polar coordinates, r goes to r, and theta goes to phi minus theta. Clear? So that gives you <coughs> what, um, either minus r plus sign. Clear? So that only the theta part uh, matters in spherical polar coordinates for the parity. It is simply you are taking, let's say, vector in the first quadrant, it will go to the third quadrant. Eh? There only the theta changed by pi minus theta, clear? So you should not say, here you are you take r tends to minus r, eh? clear? So it's actually x, y, z goes to minus x, minus y, minus z, clear? Okay. So you are hanging psi to one zero. So that's, if you see, what is the parity here? So look here. So theta will go to pi minus theta. What is that equal to? Minus sine theta. Eh? Is it? Is it? Is that true? Huh? Cos of pi minus theta is minus sine theta. Okay. So that means you will get a minus change. Eh? So it will be hang what? Odd parity. Eh? Okay. So let's evaluate them. So what is there for this two zero? Okay. Ah. What is our non-zero element? Two zero zero. Okay. H <coughs> one two one zero. How much is that? So it will be simply integration over a d three r. Okay. Okay. So you write it like this thing. Okay. So d r. Okay b theta, b phi, r square, okay, then you are hanging this psi 2, 0, 0 star, and then you are hanging this h1, then you are hanging psi 2, 0, clear? Just substitute for psi 2, 0, 0, okay, 2, 1, 0, and psi 2, 1, 0, clear? So much yes, Got it? So you will get a factor P, okay, E, A, Similarly, you will get the other factor as well, 2, 1, 0, okay, H1, 2, 1, 0, so that's equal to P, E, Q, writing now this h tilde so what is that equal to 0 3 e a electric field 0 0 3 e a electric field 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 
zero, zero, zero. Okay. So this is a four by four matrix. Now I need to figure out what are the eigenvalues. Clear? Okay. So now look here. So you just partially. So you are having only this matrix which you need to diagonalize, is it? So it's two by two, and this is two by two. What are the eigen eigenvalues here? It's only the diagonal terms. Clear? Okay. So the okay. So the eigenvalues are so lambda is equal to zero and zero. So corresponding to these two terms, eh? and now you diagonalize this thing. <coughs> so it is okay. So you take now this zero. Okay, so let's write three e a. If anybody does not know, so three e a. Okay, zero. Okay, so put as zero minus lambda, minus lambda minus lambda. Take a determinant equal to zero. What is lambda then? <coughs> so lambda square minus this thing. Lambda is equal to plus minus three e a. Magnitude. So what are the eigenvalues? So you are having three e a. Okay, it is simply actually if you see this is simply the poly x matrix. Zero one one zero. Clear? And you take it out. Okay. So the eigenvalues are only plus minus one. Okay. So what you have done? Now tell me what you have figured out. So degeneracy is not lifted <coughs> completely. There is a partial lift of degeneracy. Why? So you still have two eigenvalues having the same okay, energy. Clear? So there is a degeneracy corresponding two levels as well. Okay. Now if you see what are these two levels? Anybody? Okay. So what what was this? This was actually two x k, and this was what? Two p. Two p which one? Huh? Where? Okay, L is equal to one, M is equal to one. Clear? Mm -hmm. So, Samshya, what is that state? P X state. Yeah? Okay, so P Y and P Z. There is okay. So there is no <coughs> mixing of these two orbitals. You got it? Okay. So, Samshya, what what is the next task to figure out? I need to figure out what are the good eigenstates. Since degeneracy is not completely lifted, there is a partial lift of degeneracy. Still, I need to figure out. At least what kind of states I can have. Clear? Okay. So if you see, um, what should be the eigen state of this thing? Okay. So I am having. Okay. So my state was like this thing. So two, zero, zero. Then I am having two, one, one. Okay. No. So two, one, zero. Huh? Sorry. These are. Uh, this is a z state, not p x state. Two, one, one. Then two, one, minus one. Clear? Got it? Okay, so now which states will give me zero? So this will give me zero. This will give me zero. Clear? So you are having corresponding to this state, you are having two one one. Corresponding to this state, you are having two minus one. Now I need to figure out what is for this thing. Okay, so apply this matrix on that. What you will get? You will get actually the linear combination of these two states. So this will correspond to two zero zero plus two one zero by root two. Normalization, and you are having here two zero zero minus two one zero root of two. So what does that mean? So you are having three set of states here. Eh? So you can interpret these eigenvalues in this way. You can say there is actually a permanent dipole moment eh? because E Z corresponds to the dipole operator. Is it? Is that true? Charge multiplied by distance is the dipole moment. Clear? So you can think E Z is actually the perturbation what you are having that is a dipole operator, and that measures your dipole moment. You can think. Uh, forget about E. Eh? In units of E, I am saying E times Z that is a dipole operator multiplied by electric field. Clear? Okay? Yes. So the expectation value what you are you are getting a non-zero value here. Okay. So one non-zero value which is having a positive value. So you can think the dipole <coughs> is oriented along the field. Okay. And the, or the dipole is oriented. Opposite to the field, and there is a projection of the dipole moment where its value is zero. So zero projection along. Okay, at, you can think where at the origin. Clear? No, Shyamal. So you are having a dipole moment, uh, a permanent dipole moment that is either orienting along the x-axis, sorry, along the field direction or opposite to the field direction. Okay, if you see in the quadratic Stark effect, what we are having, so we have no permanent dipole moment in here, because there was energy was not proportional to the electric field, is it? 
So if you see the energy is proportional to this electric field, okay? So it is actually E times A, A is the Bohr radius. Eh? What are the dimensions here? It is actually the dipole moment. Okay? Dipole moment multiplied by the field. Eh? Forget about this three. Eh? It is it will give simply the strength. So it is simply E times A. Eh? That is the dipole moment. Eh? So that means you are having a permanent dipole moment here. That's okay. Okay, in this okay, so you have figured out in this two S state that permanent dipole exists, which either orients along the direction of the field or opposite to that field. Okay, got it? So much on. Okay, so okay, and there are uh, states you can think since dipole is a vector, eh? so two states are having the zero dipole moment along the direction of field, eh? having the zero projection. Eh? You can think a vector having no projection. Eh? Clear? Okay. Now, how to how you can figure out? Um, okay, the degeneracy. <coughs> okay, how you can lift up the degeneracy of these two states? Okay. First point. Is, okay, let me put this point first. So, look, the energy is proportional to the electric field linearly, is it? Because these eigenvalues are simply the energy eigenvalues. Eh? Okay. So, it is linear. That's why we call it as a linear star effect. Eh? Okay. Now, how to lift this degeneracy? So you go to the second order perturbation theory, okay? If the degenerate second order perturbation theory, and you will see the degeneracy is completely lifted. Clear? Got it? Okay. So uh, up to this, okay, the first order correction. So these are actually the good, okay? Not so good, but these are the good eigenstates. Clear? So now let's. Yes. Oh yes, it is two zero. Good. So it is simply the conjugate of this. Thing. Okay. So the parity, so you are having parity is an operation, it's a discrete operation, clear? So it will take your this r, okay, the vector r, not the radial coordinate, vector r to minus r. <coughs> like this one. It is a kind of operation. Clear? So now tell me what is the matrix that will correspond to it? So if you apply this kind of matrix, minus one. Minus one, minus one, zero, 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 okay, zero. So we make the first two. Yes, okay. So act to this on x, y, z. So this is your vector r. What you will get? Minus x, minus y, minus z. Okay. So it's a discrete symmetry. Eh? So you can okay now apply this again. So if you apply, apply again parity on this thing, so one more parity, you will get back the same state. It is simply the reflection about the origin. Okay, so it is something, you are having the vector here. Okay, x, y, z. So what is the reflection? Is it here or here? Huh? Fourth Fourth Second So where is x? Uh, what you get? Minus x and minus y. Okay, why? So what is here? So it is minus x and plus y, and it's uh, minus y and plus x. You are having minus x and minus y. Clear? So here. Got it? So it's simply what I said. It is simply the reflection about the origin. Clear? So when you take the reflection, what do you get? Whether you get here or <laughs> so you will get here. Clear? Okay, so now let's take. Mm. Uh, yes. Okay. So now let's take uh, your. Okay, in terms of r theta and phi. 
so now you are having this r theta in spherical polar coordinates okay so let's take only the polar coordinates for the time being r theta so what is your x in r polar coordinates okay r cos theta y is equal to r sin of theta clear okay so what you, what you changing so it is actually the you are on the circle clear so r is fixed clear so you are having r is fixed okay let's say you are having this very point x y so r is your fixed so since this vector goes here okay so r is fixed there is no change in r like sorry this is r, r is the magnitude of the vector eh? this is simply the magnitude it's a positive quantity eh? so what is changing here okay so it is theta is changing what will be the theta for this very point so if you are hang so you are hang theta here so what should be here huh? pi minus theta clear so here it will be what pi minus theta clear so much sure so now let's look so when you take pi minus theta so x will go to so both uh, it, they are negative clear so it will go to minus sin theta it will go to minus cos theta clear both will be what negative so, negative. so uh, am i saying correct so that means x will go to minus x y will go to minus y clear so now you take any kind of wave function okay so let's take the harmonic oscillator clear so what is the ground state wave function if you remember the ground state wave function is e raised power minus some constant let's write a it is of the form of e raised power x square clear so now let's take x to x so what is its profile so it's a gaussian profile clear so if i take x to minus x it is an invariant clear so it's on for one dimensional case it's like this thing okay so it means it's hanging even parity okay now if i take the first x i state psi of x so that's actually pr proportional to x e raised for minus e x square something eh? so there will be one factor here x minus one some kind of thing no it is only x i'm sorry x e raised for minus e x square so now let's take x to minus x what will happen so it will change the sign clear so how it will look like so the first x i state will look like Okay, so let's take the quadrant. So you are having these two points. So if this is uh, like the, okay, so it is something, something like this. Clear? So these two are related uh, by parity. Clear? So similar, if you take the next x x i state, so that is x square e raised for minus a x square. So it is having again even parity. Both the bells will be where? Clear? Got it? Have you understood? It? Okay. So this is how we determine the parity. Okay. So try if you are not still <coughs> able to resolve it, try to solve the one-dimensional box. Okay. Particle in a one-dimensional box having length from minus a to plus a, not from zero to a. Okay. So it's a symmetric box about origin, eh? minus a to a, and try to figure out its eigenstates. You will see. You will actually differentiate between the even and odd parity states there. Eh? Clear? 